everybody and happy, happy, happy Friday. Um, we're gonna get started. So if you saw Chris Sheldon and Van Gould walking down the street, uh, you might think that they seem like two average looking dudes, but make no mistake, Sheldon and Van are industry leading marketing geniuses putting maximum effort at maximum effort. And maximum effort, as you all know, makes movies, TV series, content, ads, and cocktails for the personal amusement of Ryan Reynolds. Sheldon is a tall creative director, Van is a short creative director, and together they are a perfectly sized creative team. They are also former Shark Tank rejects as co-founders of the world's most hated phone company, No Phone. A fake phone with no screen, no battery, no apps, no camera or really any capabilities. And their fake phone company, No Phone, has sold over 25,000 units to date and rakes in over $27 in annual profit. After graduating from the Brand Center, Sheldon and Van began working together at Barton F. Graff. And before all of the agency's clients and employees left, they worked on Little Caesars, Supercell, Tomcat, and Sour Patch Kids. So what's the secret to their marginal success? Nobody will ever know, but one thing's for sure, Sheldon and Van don't know either. And although we cannot pledge a Shark Tank million dollar offer for no phone, we'd like to pledge allegiance. So if everyone could hold up their phones and throw them out because we are handing over the show to Sheldon and Van. Thank you very much, that was great. Yeah, that was, that was way too nice. <laughs> oh yeah it's really happy to be here it's it's great to, it's great to see you all and uh, happy happy to be back uh with the brand center crew let's get into it sheldon oops i could do that wrong one second say this is what happens when you don't you, know, you don't test before your presentation counter would be very upset with us <laughs> i think he's on the line i think i saw him <laughs> Share sound. All right, I think we're good. All right. All right, can everybody see that? All right, okay, I think we're good. <laughs> let's do it. All right, All right. let's do it. <laughs> All right. Thanks for, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, our presentation is titled, How to Live Fast, Die Young, and Burn Bridges. Absolutely. That's that's really the title of our talk today. And uh, today we're going to give you a step by step guide on how to die before you get old and how to burn through all of Brand Center's amazing advertising content. This is a, a kind of a joke, but honestly, it's been our path thus far and it might be your path, too. So let's get on with this presentation, which has surely been flagged by VCU security staff. <laughs> Chapter one, how to burn bridges. Absolutely. You know, Sheldon and I, we're the uh, foremost experts in, uh, you know, burning bridges and advertising. Together, we've burned about seven bridges in 10 years, burned one bridge twice. Uh, we don't recommend doing this, but here's some rough rules if you need to burn a bridge too. Rule number one, D don't set fire to your current bridge before the next bridge is built. Uh, this is a, uh, this is basic, you know, Bridge burning 101, but I uh, just wanted to make sure you know it. Rule number two, uh, you're going to have to burn a few bridges, uh, so get used to playing with fire. And, and rule number three, last rule, this one's important, you know, please, please do not burn down a real bridge. That's, a, that's vandalism, terrorism. Burning bridges is a, is a phrase, just want to make sure that's clear. Um, yeah, Van and I and our lawyer uh, thought it'd be important for us to clarify this, this particular rule. Uh, we don't want any Brand Center students walking away from this presentation and burning down a bridge on the James River. As a lover of comedy, I admit that would be kind of funny, but as a citizen of this country, I can't allow it. Are we all clear? I need everyone to raise their right hands and repeat after me. I will not burn down a bridge on the James River or any river. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're gonna to go to the story time. Um, so 
so I, I started working at a big agency and I, I really didn't like it. Um, you should uh, immediately be suspicious of an agency that has a bar inside of it. Um, and then Jerry Graff uh, from Barton F. Graff offered me a job at Barton and uh, I had to make a tough decision. Uh, stay here and die or burn down a bridge and make pizza commercials. Uh, so um, I didn't even really think about it. I was pouring gasoline on that bridge as soon as uh, while I was on the phone with Jerry. And I thought that my old agency would be mad at me um, because I was only there for like four weeks and I took a one week vacation. But uh, they told me I could come back anytime I wanted. <laughs> Uh, they immediately rebuilt the bridge as soon as I burned, right after I burned it down. Uh, so it was like it didn't even happen. Um, so uh, we got, I got to Barton. It was just me. Um, and uh, uh, um, we had a, a lot of, I had a lot of fun working there, but I was also partnerless. Um, and I was the only solo creative there. Um, and uh, Jerry asked me, who do you want your partner to be? And uh, I, I immediately thought of this moment, um, and it was a few years prior, where I was uh, um, interviewing for an internship, and I was bouncing around a bunch of different agencies in New York, and I was like halfway like out the door on the whole advertising thing. And I was almost just gonna like, just not do advertising. Um, and uh, uh, I was talking to this recruiter, and he was telling me about the job, and this guy was like a grade A douchebag. <laughs> And he was just reinforcing like all the things I was concerned about with advertising. And I was like, this, this seems, this industry seems like a con, like a big Ponzi scheme. And like, I don't even like the people. I don't like this recruiter that's talking to me. Why am I going to work at this, in this industry? And, uh, I, and then there was this big turning point and it was this view master <laughs> that was sitting on the stack of like a bunch of portfolios behind this recruiter. And, um, and this was like, right on the cusp of like when websites were coming out. And uh, so people still sent like physical portfolios. Um, so on the stack at the top of this was this stupid view master thing. And I'm like, what is that? And he said, some guy sent that to me and he put his whole portfolio in the view master toy. <laughs> and, uh, and he said like, uh, he was like, the, you can't, I can't even like read the headlines on the ads <laughs> and <laughs> This thing is this thing is stupid. This guy's an idiot, and I'm like, you're an idiot for not hiring him. This is genius. And uh, so when Jerry asked me who I wanted to be my partner, I was like, the Viewmaster guy. And he's like, the Viewmaster guy. And I'm like, oh, never mind. His name is Van Gould. <laughs> and we 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 uh, started working together, and it, we've made uh, some of the best work in our career. And um, I was just, if you, it, the moral of the story is. Uh, you know, um, don't be afraid about burning down a bridge and also choose a partner who puts their whole portfolio in a ViewMaster toy because <laughs> uh, that's, that's the, don't listen to a, a dumb recruiter. <laughs> um, so it, we're, we're going to show you a couple of commercials we made together right when we started at Barton. Oh, sorry, I was supposed to skip slides. This is Jerry, uh, we're picking him up. And then this one, first one is Little Caesars commercial. Hi, we are the Quattro Brothers. People assume we're exactly the same, but we're not. We like different kinds of pizza. I like cheese. I like pepperoni. I like sausage and pepperoni. I like sausage and bruschetta. Here's your Quattro pizza. We also have different shoe sizes. It's four tasty pizzas in one. Get a large Little Caesars Quattro for just seven bucks. Pizza, 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 pizza. And then here's another one from, uh, for Supercell. Come on, Builder! Come on now, Builder! Come on, come on, come on! Hammer, 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 jab! Hammer, jab, hammer, hammer, jab! Ooh, you better catch that hammer, hammer, jab! Have a jam, 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 have a jam
Hammer Jam. Um, so those are two commercials that we, we uh, worked on at Barton that were really, um, really still makes us laugh. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, there was a, it was a really, really fun time. And um, we stayed there up until the end of that place. But um, yeah, we, we, still, we still talk about that place all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Chapter 1.5, how not to burn bridges. All right, so I know we just told you how to burn bridges, uh, but maybe don't burn the bridge on your first job. Yeah, that, that, that first chapter wasn't, wasn't, a, wasn't a great idea, actually. You know, you're, you're brand new, to, you're, you're just about to, you know, go into this industry. Uh, probably want to wait a few years before we start burning some bridges and you know, and if you can, like, it, it might be good to not, you know, try not to burn bridges at all. It, it's not the best thing, but, you know, sometimes it happens. But, but you know, at the beginning of your job, let's, let's try to keep the, the burn bridging to a minimum. Uh, my, my first job, um, I was in New York and I, I moved there uh, and lived with several other guys, seven other guys from Brand Center. Um, and the job was like, just okay. Uh, I, I wasn't making the best work and the pay was terrible, but it paid my rent. And then I lived with uh, seven of my best friends um, and it was a vast improvement over just living with my parents. So I, 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 I love that first job, even though it wasn't that great. Yeah, and, and here, this was one of, the, one of the ads I made personally when I was at Brand Center. And, you know, after seeing this, I think, I think pretty much everyone at Brand Center, probably the professors and, and all the students thought, oh man, this guy is, is never gonna get hired by anyone. Uh, but for some reason it, it worked out and, and uh, Chris Porter, uh, Bogusky, you know, uh, they actually uh, uh, gave me a shot. I, I have no idea why, uh, <clears throat> I think it was <clears throat> Ashley, but uh, you know, uh, they did hire me and then I moved out to Boulder, Colorado. Uh, and I was, you know, super excited. I'm at, you know, the one of the, this is going to be the coolest, one of the coolest ad agencies at the time. Now it doesn't even exist, but at the time it was cool. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and so I went out to Boulder and, and started, started, you know, working on some, making some, making some ads. Like we all, you know, like you all are, uh, have been, we've all been, like we had been trying to do for, for, you know, while we were at Brand Center. And uh, I think the next slide uh, has, this was, I think, the you know one of the first ads I made there, right? This was, uh, you know, uh, for a very revolutionary device called the Windows Phone. Um, and this ad, this you know, I think I actually wrote the headline on this myself. I'm you know very very good writing, um, and um, it, it performed so well this ad that you know they, that that Microsoft actually discontinued the entire product line. Um, I, I, shortly after this billboard was produced. Uh, so, so the campaign did great. Uh, and, you know, I was there for about a year working on different stuff, but, you know, when you go into, a, into a, a, even a hotter place, you're, you're the junior person, you get, you get put on a lot of, you know, the projects people don't want to work on and that type of thing, but it's still, it's still super fun and, and you try to do the best you can. Um, but, but they did, you know, they, I'd say I was there about a year and a half and, and they had a big round of layoffs. So I think that was the first time Crispin had layoffs, but you know, uh, I actually got laid off and uh, it was a huge bummer. And I was, I was like, why did I get laid off? Was it, you know, maybe it was that Windows phone campaign that did, did so terrible that Microsoft lost a lot of money or maybe Andrew Keller finally saw that Alka-Seltzer ad I made at Brand Center. I'm not sure, either way, I didn't have a job, I needed a job. so. You know, I called up, I called up Sheldon actually, and I, I said, "Hey, uh, can, hey man, can I come uh, sleep on your futon uh, while I uh, while I look for a job in New York?" Uh, and he's like, "Sure." So I jumped on a flight. I had nothing else to do. I went out there, and I, I think I like I was on that <laughs> I was on that futon for way, way too long. Um, uh, I think the guys, you know, there's seven guys all in this pretty small apartment, <laughs> and uh, now they've got a guy on their couch. Uh, you know, so after a while, two, two of the guys there actually talk to their boss and they're like, Hey man, we please hire this guy. We got to get him off the futon. And, uh, that's how I got my first job in New York and, and moved out there. 
Uh, so I just, you know, just bringing this up because like, you know, your, your first job, you know, I know you guys are all deep in the thick of it right now. Uh, and, but don't worry, like, you know, I know some people are starting to get jobs. You know, your first job is, is not going to be your dream job. Like it's, it's, that's totally fine. Like, you know, you might, you might actually go to a place that's kind of cool, but you might end up making one of the worst advertising campaigns in history and, and you might get laid off and it, it, everything might fall apart. Your whole life might feel like, you're like, what have I done? But then the great thing is you, you can call up your brand center friends and, you know, and you say, hey, can, can I come sleep on your futon? And, and it'll all work out. All those steps, exactly. <laughs> um, to be honest, we did not come up with the saying, live fast, die young. That was James Dean, which brings us to our next topic, how to steal ideas. Yeah, how to steal ideas. You know, I think whatever you do, don't don't ever steal other people's ideas. That that's that's what I really want to say. And unless the idea is like really good, and you're like, oh my god, this this idea is so great, then like maybe ask them. You know, ask for permission to steal it. You know, see if there's a way you can get that idea into your. You know, but but do it the right way. Don't don't be shady. Uh, and I have a little story about this. You know, we, we were actually in uh, Peter Cowder's culture class, which I loved. And uh, a group of our fellow Brand Center classmates did a whole like presentation where they literally went out to Green Bank, West Virginia. There's this insane, no Wi-Fi zone. It's like all these people move out there because they're allergic to Wi-Fi and they just live in, in the mountains and, and they're like hermits and they, and they, 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 they just live out there because they have this huge satellite, which makes it so there can't be any Wi-Fi there. So if you're allergic to Wi-Fi, this is the best place to be. And so they went out there, they interviewed these people in the mountains. It was totally insane. It was an, ex an excellent culture presentation. And I, I always, I always, I, I always remembered it, you know, and then so years, late, years go by and working at a place, <laughs> working at a place. Um, and we actually sold a documentary with Werner Herzog for this client NetScout. And uh, it was amazing on um, this uh, constantly on the phone with this the insane German director. And th they actually asked us like, uh, it was, there was a, the documentary is about the internet. And they're like, you know, do you have, you guys have any ideas for shooting locations? And so I immediately remembered that insane culture presentation. And I was like, that's a great shooting location. <laughs> so I call, but you know, I, I'm not gonna just steal the idea. I called up Kevin Weir. I was like, hey man, is it okay if uh, you know Werner Herzog uses your culture presentation location for his documentary location? And he was like, sure. And you know, he gave he gave us permission and and now now that's in the documentary. It's like it's literally, you know, uh, almost exactly what they did, but but now Werner Herzog took credit for it. It's pretty nice. Rip it off. <laughs> What's that? Or we'll play a trailer from that movie. This is the birthplace of the internet. Let's enter this very special place. That machine over there is the first piece of internet equipment. This is a military hardened machine. It has a unique odor. <laughs> and it was from here that the first message was sent. A revolution began. The explosion of information technology on the internet has led to some of its greatest glories. Could this team beat the real Brazilian football team? That is the goal, to have a team of soccer playing robots defeat the FIFA world champion. In the forest, we met a modern day hermit. I became very ill from wireless radiation signals. As soon as I heard there was a place with no cell towers, I was here in 48 hours. The internet is a manifestation of evil itself. Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, is pursuing how we would talk to colonies on Mars via the internet. I mean, right now, we can't even get one person to Mars, so clearly... I would come along. I wouldn't have a problem. 
we're going to have a revolution in our definition of what it means to be human. Will our children's children's children need the companionship of humans? Or will they have evolved in a world where that's not important? You could essentially, in the not too distant future, tweet thoughts. Will there ever be a artificial intelligent machine that makes movies? Absolutely, yes. Will it be quite as good as yours? No one can, can even come close. Of course not. Have the monks stopped meditating? They all seem to be tweeting. That voice. So yeah, make, make sure you remember all those culture presentations. Don't forget them. They might come in handy one day. Uh, but, but do want to, again, stress, you know, don't steal ideas, you know, not, not good, but you know, if, if, if it's, if it's a little, you know, using something that was done, but, but, uh, but you get a little permission, I think that's, I think that's okay. Um, or, or if, you know, if, if the person's like long dead, like James Dean, you can use it for your presentation. I think that's okay too. Um, uh, and, and if, if you do meet Werner Herzog, uh, don't, don't tell him this, this story. I think he, he's kind of a scary guy and, uh, he, he, he wouldn't like it, so thanks. Chapter three, how to quit your job. Oh, whoops, what did you ask? Um, so yeah, like we said, we're uh, kind of experts in this. Um, if, uh, and our kind of thinking on this is, uh, if, you're, if you're not happy with what you're making at your job, um, that's like a pretty big problem. Um, you, um, if you don't make something great, um, at least like once a year, um you can't get promoted um you you know the recruiters stop calling and um you, you only have so much time to make something amazing um so don't let other people prevent you from making the best work of your career uh if you make terrible work it should be because you suck <laughs> not because a creative resource manager is not giving the right projects or a dumb creative director is not giving the right projects um, it just don't, if, if you get into a position where, um, you're, you're just not happy with the work, you should probably think about leaving and it's, and you shouldn't be afraid to do it or ashamed to do it. Like, um, the, the, um, it won't be that as bad as you think it was. <laughs> I, I always thought like, uh, my dad, um, worked at his job for his, the same job for his entire life. And he's always like, what are you doing? <laughs> you're on like your, your eighth job now. Um, but it's just, uh, you're not doing any service to the place you're working at. If you're unhappy, you're not doing a service to your career. Um, you should just find what, what, um, uh, makes you happy. And, uh, a few years ago, Van and I experienced this. Um, we were asked to work on a pharma client at a non pharma agency. <laughs> um, and uh, we said, no, <laughs> vehemently, no, we don't want to work on this. You're like, and, hey, is, uh, there, is there like a beer client we could work on or something <laughs> else? Or... <laughs> and they said, we had to work on it um, financially. Uh, and uh, uh, so we started looking for a job while we're working on maybe the worst work we've ever worked on. And uh, here's a photo of Van in the midst of the, one of those uh, working sessions um yeah like you know it, and this also is more probably later you're like 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 i said like your first job things like that you're gonna work on some stuff that's not great but this is more just like as as you're going forward you know if you end up you go to a place and they tell you you're gonna work on on, the, on these certain things and then you get put on a pharma client and and then in your in your life starts to become ruined and, and you know, this, this was a pretty rough time in my life. I, I was having a lot of nightmares about all this uh, legal pharma client feedback and uh, pages and pages of legal copy. And you know, I was complaining to my wife about it. And I was complaining around uh, to my son about it. I was complaining to my dog about it. Uh, you know, and they, they were all sick of hearing about it. And you're, you're probably sick of hearing me complain about it right now. That, that's how bad it was. So I was like, we got it. We got to get out of here, man. We got to get out of here. Uh, but then we uh, we took all of that frustration we had and um, used it to land our dream job. 
Fox News. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maximum effort. <laughs> Um, after a lot of praying and hoping, uh, Ryan Reynolds offered us a job uh, and saved, really saved our careers. Um, and uh, now um, Ben's wife and child and dog hear him complain about other things. But none of that happened if we didn't quit. Um, so that's the most important thing. And we would have never invented shoulder patties. When you're busy at work, there's simply no time for lunch. Introducing shoulder patties from Jack in the Box. Stylish in the morning, delicious in the afternoon. Every Jack in the Box shoulder patty is made with 100% beef to give you a broader shoulder and a powerful burger shape. What's that captivating scent? I'll never tell. Shoulder patties from Jack in the Box. It's a great product. <laughs> Um, uh, I think th at this point in the presentation, we should probably, Vince, should we check in with our boss to see if we still have a job? Oh, it's probably a good idea. He'd probably, probably wonder what, why we're not working right now. Yeah. Uh, so now a special message from George Dewey, president, founder of Maximum Effort. I don't know who these two are. Don't listen to a word they say. Sheldon and Stan our advertising con men. What a guy. Such a great boss. Well, you know, he, he, just so you guys know, he, he does know who we are. Uh, I, at least I, I'm pretty sure he does. Uh, we did start not that long ago, but, but you know, I was just on a shoot with him uh, at Sarah McLaughlin's house where we filmed this recently. Every day, 70% of all online shopping carts are abandoned at the checkout page victims of a cruel and exhausting checkout process. Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin. Please say you'll be the answer to an innocent cart whose dreams are crushed by questions like, is your billing address the same as your home address? Mailing address. Shipping address. Email address. Confirm email address. CVV. Your actions can help give a cart warmth and care. Oh, that is a nice blender. Hm. Go to bolt.com and see the difference one-click shopping can make to millions of carts. Go to Bolt.com to experience one-click shopping on any site. Please come on, we got Sarah Fuckin' McLaughlin, McLaughlin, oh. Beautiful. She, she's a really nice lady too. This next, this next uh, chapter, chapter four, is how to drink beer. And, um, you know, we, we know a lot, both of us, about, about drinking beer. Um, we both learned a lot about drinking beer when we were at Brand Center. And I really firmly believe that, you know, drinking is an is a important skill to have. Um, and, you know, it's totally okay if you don't drink beer. Uh, I really don't think it matters. You could be drinking water, uh, seltzer, uh, tequila, whatever it is that you want to drink. It doesn't matter what you're drinking, really. I think what matters is who you're drinking with. Uh, like, the, like these guys. These are some of our brand center friends. <laughs> I'm sure people have told you this, uh, but the friends you meet at Brand Center are incredibly valuable, and you're going to reach out to them um, for the rest of your life. Uh, uh, we sure we sure have um yeah if you if you ever get laid off you know you can you can go sleep on their fut futon for a couple of weeks uh while you're looking for a new job thanks uh, thanks sheldon you're welcome uh if you ever um <clears throat> if you need uh help burning down a bridge and getting hired at an agency that makes uh great commercials for terrible pizza you can call on ross um ross got me got me hired at barton thanks ross yeah, and like we talked about, you know, you, you can ask their permission to steal their culture presentation ideas. Uh, I mean, if, if Werner Herzog needs them for a documentary, uh, thanks, Kevin. And, and you know, um, sometimes you, you're going to be drinking with you, your brand center friends. You, you you might even come up with an idea that you might use for a pitch on Shark Tank. But whatever you do, don't go on Shark Tank. It will ruin your life.
Sharks. My name is Chris Sheldon. And I'm Van Gould. We're seeking $25,000 for 15% equity in our company. There's a huge problem in the world right now, and it's called phone addiction. A recent report found that 79% of adults have their cell phones with them 22 hours a day. People are driving with their phones, sleeping with their phones, and even going on dates with their phones. Some people can't even stop looking at their phones while they're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, Sharks, we have the solution. Introducing... Ta -da. The No Phone. No Phone. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that was hard to watch. There's a moment in there, I, uh, you probably can't notice it, but I'm, I'm like looking at the exit signs on the other side of the stage. And I'm literally, I'm seriously considering leaving Van up there by himself. <laughs> but uh, it is, it yeah. is bizarre. You're out there, you're out there for like 40 minutes and they filmed all this stuff. They had me dancing at one point. It was all this weird stuff they filmed and, and we left. We're like, what have we done? Like, what are they going to edit? But I think that <laughs> the producers like this and they, they kind of, they actually edited it pretty nice, of course. Yeah. But, yeah, but you know, I will say Sheldon's hair looked, um, I don't know if you noticed, looked terrible. Yeah. Was, I told him to get his hair cut, and now, like, every time that airs, you know, everyone that sees that terrible, greasy, long hair is the worst thing in the world. Um, but anyway. Which brings us to our next topic, uh, side projects. Yeah, side projects. Yeah, this, this one's not a funny chapter. This is a very serious chapter, because this is a chapter where I'm going to tell you how important side projects are, um, you know, because you're, you're going to be working on a lot of, you know, uh, you know, briefs, uh, you know, every brief's not going to be great. And that's okay. Like, you know, you don't need to like just quit. Like we were saying every time a br brief's bad, <laughs> that wouldn't be great. But, but one great thing to do is just work on side projects or make your own brief or, or you do something else like, um, and, and, you know, uh, and then, you know, the briefs you have that you, you don't love, make sure to do the best job you can on those briefs. Like don't, don't become like the person who drops balls or, or has a bad attitude, doesn't do cool, you know, try to do their best. Like that Werner Herzog documentary actually was a terrible, terrible brief. It was a trade show video uh, where they were like, hey, no one wanted to work on it for this weird company that was a friend of the friend of the agency who had a tech company. And no one wanted to work on this trade show video. And then and then we ended up just pitching an idea to do a Werner Herzog documentary for the trade show. And and they were like, cool. And then we ended up premiering it at Sundance instead of the trade show. So it's like, you know, sometimes the briefs are going to suck, but like turn them into something else, try to make it work. And then if it doesn't work out, work on side projects. That's right. <clears throat> um, yeah. So for the non Werner Herzog documentary, Bad Briefs, just get it done quickly and do your own thing on the side. <laughs> um, Mark Cuban, uh, do not buy our fake phone company, but uh, this side project has helped us get the job we have right now, um, has helped us get the last three jobs, has uh, helped us uh, keep our job at Jerry's place. Like it was um, pretty amazing how much that has helped us. So side projects, very important. Um, chapter six, the last chapter, this is the final chapter. Yes, if you're still awake, congratulations. It's the last chapter of our presentation. We promise there won't be a bonus joke chapter or anything like that. So to recap everything we've, we've spoke about, um, use extreme caution when burning bridges in advertising. And, you know, don't please don't burn real bridges. Uh, also try not to burn figurative bridges. Um, and please make sure to stay friends with the with the with the people at Brand Center. And also like a lot of these guys, you know, all those guys, a lot of the guys Sheldon lived with, I wasn't really like big friends with them at Brand Center, but like you have a connection and, and then when you move places, you end up working with them. It's like you become friends. So like, even if you're not friends with them now, like yeah, it might, it might turn into something later, which is great. Um, and you know, you're, you're going to be work just preserve those friendships. You're going to be working a lot of late nights with them. They're going to help you get jobs. When you you where you're bummed out about the farmer client you're working on, they'll they'll drink beer with you, make you feel better. Um, it could be you know, it's good, it's good to have these friendships and keep them. 
Um, maybe one of those friends becomes a partner you have for 10 years plus, plus 10 years. Um, so uh, yeah, this is uh, um, keep, yeah. keep tabs on the people next to you. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and you know, even though we're we're not in the same room with you right now, we're not at which kind of wish we were there at Brand Center with you, but um, you know, we're we're not there, but we are here for you if you ever need us. Yeah, and just like our our friends helped us out a bunch of times, we're we're always here to help you guys out too. So thank you for listening. That's it. There's supposed to be live fast die young music play that plays here. Just yeah. live fast die yeah. young, but uh, it's not playing. Uh, it's not playing. But you can imagine it. You can't end on a good. You can't always end on a great note. <laughs> awesome! Thank you so much, Ben and Sheldon, for a fabulous and memorable last Friday Forum ever. Um, so we have some time now for questions. You can drop them in the chat. Raise your hand. Shout them out. It's an organized yeah, yeah just oh. shout them out because I, I i am so bad at keeping up with the chats just like let's just make total chaos here just shout them out and we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see how this goes i've got one um i noticed that earlier you guys specifically mentioned side projects but i'm kind of curious like what were some of the side projects that y'all did um in your own spare time yeah, I would say like, I mean, obviously no phone was one that like we were just at a bar and, and, uh, you know, just shooting the shit about look, we're looking around at everyone and everyone's, everyone's staring at their phones and you're like, man, these people, you kind of just need like a block of plastic to hold, you know, and like, that's it. Like you, you come up with an idea and then, and then you're like, oh shit, we should actually do that. Let's go 3D print it. Let's make it happen. Um, I think it's just it's just stuff like that. Like I think, uh, and it also doesn't have to always be like, um, you know, a side a side project. Like the the actually like we're at maximum effort. Um, that we were working on craft brands for the for the um, for that Jimmy Kimmel um, those Jimmy Kimmel spots the eighties spots, and um, and you know and ended up. Oh well, here's a, here's an idea for a for a, a burger brand. You know that the, the craft didn't have that. We just found a client for it. so it can be like side projects that um, are even at the agency you're at. Like just make make up a brief. Like change. You know, make sure to do the brief. Don't ever not do the brief. But like come up with a come up with another brief. I mean, sometimes if you bring a client an idea that like that they weren't expecting and there's no pressure on it and like no expectations and there's not like 10 different clients expecting to see this or that and just a thing flies in that's like hey what if we do this you're gonna be like holy shit yeah let's do it <laughs> you know so I think it's it's we you know I'll, I'll actually a lot of the projects we've worked on like the stuff we really like uh at agencies it's like it's been um it hasn't been like a, a big brief or whatever right it was just something that we kind of pitched and Jared Graff would be like cool let's do it <laughs> So yeah, definitely, definitely always do that. I recommend it. On Good that day. note, I was wondering, uh, hey, how are you? Hey, what's Love up? you guys. Very funny. Thank you. I was wondering, um, I guess, then what's your relationship then with your strategists? I think if like, uh, if sometimes you're able to kind of veer or um, kind of think of things outside the brief, I guess, like what's the relationship? Yeah, I think, I think that, I think it's like really important, like, there's some really good strategists, people that we've worked at Brand Center with who are great. And it's like, I think it's it's just it's really important to develop good relationships, especially when you get on like the higher you go up, like you have to start doing all these meetings with clients and all this stuff. That you're like, well, I don't even know what's happening right now. This is insane. All these decks and all this stuff. It's like, uh, it's really good to have those relationships because one, like they'll make a really great strategy. Um and then, you know, sometimes you can be like, hey, what if we did this and that? And then some of the really good strategies are like, oh, that's a great idea. And they'll create another strategy off that. Or, but, uh, but you know, I think, I think it's always important, you know, if the, if the clients agree to a strategy and, and it's a pretty tight strategy, we'll, like, we'll, we'll really work on making that work. But I think it's just some, sometimes it just, you know, some projects, it takes the pressure off when, when you just do something that, that wasn't, wasn't briefed, it wasn't expected. Um, 
And the, the, the great thing would be is if you have a strategist that you're really good, you know, you have great rapport with, you can be like, hey, I have this great idea. How can, like, how, how, can we, how can we make it better? And they can help you sell it, right? Like they can make it like client bulletproof and like back it out. And, and so like, I think some of the, you know, really creative strategists like that have, have ways to make great briefs, but then also, you know, help just sell great work. Even if, even if a creative just like came up with it and it was kind of random. So they also have helped us because we're not smart people and we have like very dumb ideas and they make them seem smart, but they're still dumb. Right. Yeah. I think, <laughs> like, I think uh, we, we try to like, but it, it, it wouldn't have gotten made. They'll find, they'll find like that. the smart nugget in the dumbness yeah. and like bring that to the front. So the client just doesn't say like, Hey, what are you guys just joking around? What are you doing? And they're like, Oh, I see the smart insight there and, and help sell it. Very important. Good Thank question. you. Can I ask a question kind of following that up? Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Izzy. So Thanks. things that I guess kind of weren't planned and happened, I'm not sure if you were at maximum effort yet, but the Peloton girl, mm -hmm. um, can you guys like just kind of talk about your process for that? Like why that crazy, weird viral moment, you know? Yeah, I think I think the big, it's, you know, honestly, it's, it's a really been a really cool place to work in that um they really have like a a, a, a finger and pulse on on culture and they work really fast and so it's like you know and and ryan actually he's very involved and he, he's so smart and so like um you know just knows what like great creative work is and it, and i think it's just like kind of sometimes trying to make stuff that doesn't feel like advertising. It just feels like a response to something that's happening in culture. So yeah, I think that was a great example. Like, I think the story I heard about that is like crazy where, you know, that, that, that happened, they saw the new, you know, the news, everyone's talking about it and they're like, what can we do? Oh, what if we do, what if we grab her, put her in an aviation ad? And I think they literally shot it in like, like, I don't know, 24 hours or something like, Ryan, I think, called her and talked. She was a little nervous about it. And, <laughs> and like, it, it's that, so, you know, I, the Ryan thing definitely helps, but I, but it's also just a pretty nimble place. And, you know, I think like you're just mentioning like, like this, the last, uh, you know, we're talking about strategists and stuff. I think, you know, it's great when the strategists are all like, that's a great idea. Let's help sell it. Let's figure it out. And everyone's move, moving forward fast and making stuff happen. And just getting it to the client, getting it approved so you can go shoot it. So that, that was a crazy one. I don't think it's always like shooting stuff in 24 <laughs> hours. That's kind of insane. And producers will like lose their mind when you are like, we can do that. <laughs> but you also need to get it out quickly, right? Because it's like, if you don't, then the press is kind of like, ah, eh, right. That's old news, you know? So yeah. they're, they're just very fast. I, I, we, we try to keep up with it. It's, it's really George and, and Ryan and, and Dan and everyone else there who, they're just really used to working at that speed. And, and we're just, we're, we're just trying to, we're, we're trying to get there. I don't think we've, we've gotten as fast as them yet though, but, but it's, it's definitely a speed thing for sure. That's awesome. Thank you. Yep. Um, I have a question. Uh, hi, my name's Anne. Thanks for talking to us today. Um, obviously like talking about culture and obviously a lot of the work that you all do um, like forms a lot of culture and inspires a lot of other people, but what is something or a project or a piece of culture that you both are inspired by right now in or outside of advertising? Oh my gosh. It's like, <laughs> we're so, we're so in the thick of it. It's like, it's, a, it's like, oh, you know, it's weird. It's a little bit of a weird news cycle right now. Right. We're like, everything is like, it's like the Ukraine stuff, which is just like the worst thing in the world. And, um, so it's a little tricky when things are like that and like inflation and all that stuff. And so I think it's like, like I can't think of like one thing right now because I feel like once it's passed, it doesn't feel as fresh anymore. But like right now, so we were like on Google News or whatever, right? And so anything popped up that wasn't a huge bummer, <laughs> like I would latch onto that because like that, I just like people need it right now. It's like the le people need levity right now. It's like, um, and I think, I think, it's, I think that's the same thing, like with, with the pandemic and, and that type of stuff. I think there's just so much, um, 
everything is so sad. It's nice when you can like lift people up. And I think that's what maximum effort tries to do, but I don't have, I don't have a perfect answer to like an uh, example happening right now. I think it's just anything that feels like, Hey, I'd tell my mom about that, <laughs> you know, like, or whatever, like I, I, something everyone would relate to. And, um, and that the press would get, um, you know, talking about, I think is, so I think, I think that's a, that's actually a great way to do side projects though. Right. Like, look at the news, like what's happening. Like try to like, like we have this, we have a friend, Brian Moore, who is amazing at that. He'll like find something that's happening in culture. Like when everyone was on Zooms, right. We're all like, like this, right. And he just like found, like, he just thought it was really awkward how people dropped off of Zooms and it took forever and it's awkward. He like just made this like device that you could pull a, pull a little cord and it would turn the zoom off. <laughs> it's like such a stupid idea, but it got tons of press because everyone's like, oh, I'd love that. I'd love, like, it's, it's, just, it can be, a, it can be kind of a silly thing, but, but it's something that's, you know, everyone's like, oh, I'm on zooms and this sucks and that would be fun. Um, so it also could be something that's not, not, not something that's, uh, everyone's running towards. Like, um, mm. uh, George talks about that a lot where it's, um, the, he, he he likes to to run towards the things people nobody's running to to um on, on, to flip on the other side of the coin there but it uh and like bringing back someone you haven't seen in a while and um those kinds of things that that um somebody that you maybe thought was dead <laughs> a celebrity that you thought was dead because they haven't been in a movie in 20 years or bringing that person back and then now just the fact that you're bringing that person back is 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 something that can get press and buzz yeah uh, just it's kind of like unexpected things where you're like you know it's just something that it, it's really something that like uh, you really if you think about if you're if you were a writer and you're sitting at your desk and you're bored out of your mind writing about like ukraine and all and the, all these horrible things all the time and, and something pops in and you're like i'd love to write about that <laughs> like that sounds fun to write about it's like that type of stuff so yeah awesome thank you I have a question for y'all. Um, who was your like intended Shark Tank partner if you had one? And what were you planning to do with the money if you got any more? That's a good question. Probably so good. We didn't I don't know the answer to that still. <laughs> the money. I, well, yeah, I think, we need I, new I think I went in thinking that I think I went in thinking that we would not get a deal. I think Sheldon would, like, would convince like, no, no, no like they're gonna give us a deal because this is so ridiculous like they'll just do it and i feel like we were out there for 40 minutes and i think mark cuban was like he was close he was like pretty he close. gave guy to uh money to the guy who like sent people potatoes in the mail or something yeah like that. Um, he was, he's he's i think he's all about that culture stuff and things that are like um you know uh unexpected and and um and then, yeah, as soon as we started talking about how we had applied for a patent for a plastic rectangle, he's like, you guys suck them out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe it was him. Uh, the, 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 the Robert guy, the Canadian guy, he, he, he had no idea what we were talking about. He was very confused. He thought he was being pranked. Uh, so he was definitely not going to give us a deal. But maybe, maybe Mark would have if we, if we talked to him a little more. Uh, yeah, he was the only one I got it. Everyone else was just like really confused. <laughs> I feel like that's a compliment that he didn't like get out right away. Usually they that's finish true, the pitch yeah. and he's like, I'm out. I'm thanks. It's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> we were definitely like the the entertainment for the e for the evening, I think. Yeah. We were, we were actually in a car with like uh all these. We kind of thought the whole thing was like, we we're like, oh, is this just like they bring in all the joke people today or whatever? And then we were talking, meeting these different other entrepreneurs and driving over. And then later I'd like watch the show and see, cause it all appears like throughout the season, the different um, pitches, but I'd be like, these people would come up and be like, I'm a Harvard graduate on $3.5 million valuation. But I was like, I was sitting in a van with that guy. Holy shit. Like, um, so we were, I think we were the one kind of just, we had a sad segment before us and they needed to lift people up a little bit, I think. The clown hour. Yeah. <laughs>